when we dropped the atomic bomb. That really got their attention. They said, we better get down there and see what these kids are up to. And when they came in, saw what we were doing, they said, it's not time. We were not supposed to have that energy yet. That was not in the timeline. Whenever we were supposed to receive atomic power, it was supposed to be used for peaceful purposes and not as a weapon. And it was not intended. Mm -hmm. So when they discovered we had done that, they knew they had to do something to help with it because otherwise they said we could destroy the Earth. Earth was not developed enough. We're still too cr cramped into karma, on the wheel of karma. Mm -hmm. And we can't handle anything like that. So they said, the Earth is not ready. So they went back to the councils and were talking about it. What are we going to do? Because these kids can't handle it. They will destroy the Earth. See, the only time they can interfere is if we would get to the point of destroying the Earth. Then they would have to stop us. Because if we destroy this one little tiny planet here, it can have reverberations out through the solar system out through the galaxies and through other dimensions. And it's, uh, it would cause all kinds of havoc. So they said that could never be allowed. That's the only time they get her to step in and stop us. Okay. So they didn't want to do that. So if you remember at the end of the 1940s is when the UFO flag began. That's when we began to see more and more because they were coming and watching and seeing what we were doing. So there are councils. There are councils over solar systems, councils over uh, galaxies, councils over universes. There's definite rules and regulations about everything that happens with the galactic community. It's not random. So they went back to the council and they were very upset. They said, what are we going to do? We can't just come in and say, stop it, interfere with them. Mm -hmm. So they said there was a lot of discussion, and they came up with what I thought was a brilliant idea. They said, we can't interfere from the outside, but what if we could influence from the inside? And that was what they decided to do. Because the people on Earth were caught up in karma. They were not going to be able to make advancements, not going to be able to move forward. So the idea was to bring in pure souls, souls that had never been on earth, souls that had never accumulated karma. And where are they going to get these souls from? So that's when the call went out, the call for volunteers, come and help earth, earth is in trouble. And now, when I'm doing the sessions in the last two years, everything has changed. Now, these people have been coming since the late 40s, early 1950s. They've been coming into the earth, but they don't know what their purpose is. And they look like everybody else. They're totally human beings. They have their problems. They're not ETs. They don't have antennas. But they have ET souls. That's the difference. That's what people have a hard time understanding. Because your soul, you know, is not just in a human body. It can travel, and we've all been ETs, we've all lived in other dimensions, mm -hmm. and we just continue going from body to body. That's right. So that's what people don't understand. It's not just life on Earth. So the call went out for volunteers to come and help the Earth. Earth is in trouble. So now when I'm doing the sessions, it used to be they would always go into a past life and we would find the answers to the problems in the past life. Mm -hmm. Now the only time they go into a past life is if they have karma to be repaid and problems to work out with their families. But instead, I'm getting people who go back to the source, which is God, mm -hmm. and have never been on earth before, they never left God are they are going back to where they lived on other planets, our spaceships, other dimensions. And so they don't go into past lives. The session I just completed today was another one. Oh, uh -huh. I just came from Hawaii. The demonstration I did for the class in Hawaii was the same thing. So it's happening more and more with the people I work with. 
And for instance, well, and I talk about the ones that come from God, uh -huh. because it's not all ETs. When they go back to God, it is always such a wonderful, beautiful experience they can't even find words for it. They are there. That's where we all began. We all started with God when we started on this journey. We were all together. And the togetherness was wonderful. It was full of love. And when they describe it, it's beautiful. Sometimes they begin to vibrate and shake because of the feeling that goes through them. And they don't want to leave because if they're all together. When they do leave, then it's a feeling of separateness, separateness to where they're away from where they came from. And they don't like that. So that's where we eventually will all go back to, is where we began with God. But these are beings that had never been in a body anywhere. They were pure souls that had never left God. And the other ones were just had other bodies, but they were on spacecraft and uh, planets and dimension. So when we were doing this, I thought, well, if you enjoyed it so much, they're in this, this uh, feeling with God. They call it the source. I said, well, if you enjoyed it so much there, it was so beautiful, why did you leave? Because you know they're in a human body if they're laying there on the bed. They said, they all say the same thing. We heard the call, mm -hmm. and we answered the call. And sometimes they're, they go back to where they're having meetings on the spirit side, and they're talking to them and saying, who will volunteer to go? Earth is in trouble. They all say we heard the call and decided to go. They thought it was going to be easy. They didn't know how hard it was going to be because they're full of love and they want to help. But then when I take them through the birth experience and they're coming in here, they say, what was I thinking of? This is the densest, most happiest planet there is. The energy is extremely heavy and dense. Now they're coming from those types of places they come into a body and it's like pulling them down and dragging them down and they don't like it. Mm -hmm. So as soon as they're in the body they said, what was I thinking of? I want to go back. I don't like this. But then it's too late. They made the commitment. Mm -hmm. But what people don't understand is once you enter the body in any life, even the ones from uh, for past lives, as soon as you enter the body, you forget, because that's the way it's supposed to work. It doesn't make sense to me, but they say it, it does. Because when you come in, the blinders come down. I've taken them through the birth experience, and they're saying, i got to remember, i got to remember. And then when they're born, they'll say, I don't remember anymore. It's all gone. And I asked them one time, wouldn't it be easier if we could remember why we came, if we can remember our assignments, if we can remember our association with other people. They said, no, it wouldn't be a test if you knew the answers. <laughs> so we right. come in with everything taken away and we have to fumble through it all to find our way back. So the three waves are what, what, what is the difference between them? Okay. The first wave would be those first ones that were born. So I like to think they're in their late 50s. Some of them say they're early 60s, which would still fall in with the category. And I found some that are kind of overlap between the, the three waves. But the first, first waves that came in had the hardest time of all. They don't want to be here. And I hear that time and time again when I have clients, that I've, all my life I don't want to be here. I don't like it here, I, they don't like the violence, they can't take it. Why do people so mean to each other? They, they always say, I want to go home. And I don't know where home is, but it's not here. I, people tell me that they remember as a child standing in the kitchen talking to their mother saying, I want to go home. And the mother will say, but you are home. Mm -hmm. They say, no, this is not home, I want to go home. But they all feel like uh, they don't belong here. They don't want to be here. It's nothing about it they like at all. And they have a difficult time, even though they have a good family, they have a good job, you think they'd be happy, 
They're not. And many of them in the first wave have tried to commit suicide. Even my last client said he didn't follow through, but they would contemplate it and plan it out mm -hmm. because they want to get out of here so bad. And you can imagine what that would have been like in their teenage years. Mm -hmm. That I wonder how many of them did kill themselves for mm -hmm. no reason. Nobody could understand it. They just had to get out of here. Mm -hmm. But they come that far. But of course, suicide's never the answer. But those people have had a very hard time. But when I've worked with them, then they say, all right, I don't want to be here, I don't like it, but I'm going to stay because now they know what their assignment is and they have to do it. Now these people in all of the first and second waves are come in with what is called a sheath or a coating over them, their soul, so they will not accumulate karma because that's the idea. Come in with no karma and don't accumulate any, because if you accumulate, you're going to have to come back again. Mm -hmm. So it's more or less like it bounces off of you. Because they said karma is like sticky fly paper. You get into it, and it, you're caught in it. That's what it feels like. So you're saying the second wave also had the same kind of... Uh Thing about their their coming in, in other words, they that karma would not stick to them. Yes. But what's what's the difference again then between the second and the okay. first? Okay, the first wave, I say, are in that age group, mm -hmm. maybe fifties now, right. and the second one are younger, like uh, late forties, thirties, mm -hmm. but they had an easier time of it. They came in. Uh, they don't feel as alienated as the first group did. They are what are called channels, are um, antennas of energy. They are here just to be. They don't have to do anything.